We're rolling. The solar industry in the next six to 12 months is probably one of the greatest opportunities anybody watching this will ever have. Are you prepared? How's that? Good take? Cool. Yo. Has anybody actually got any results from this? Roll the clip. I'm Zuri Vankovic, Paul Timpson. I sell solar virtually from southern Utah to northern Arizona, Vancouver, British Columbia. There's always been something missing. I had a really low conversion rate. I've tried hiring out appointment setters. I had people not showing up to my appointments. One thing the Virtual Solar Club has really helped me with. Virtual Solar Club. Working with the Virtual Solar Sales Club. How to structure the different points of contact with each and every homeowner. I completely cleaned up my processes. Tips and tricks that I've learned for the closing call. It's so much more simple and so much more straightforward. Just by implementing the structure that Josh is going to teach you. My performance has doubled. My job is probably five times easier. Just a ton of valuable information I've learned in the Virtual Solar Club. It's a natural flow from where I took them in the first call to signing on the dotted line. I think Virtual Solar Club would be excellent for anybody at any stage. If you are in virtual solar sales, if you have had the experience that something is missing in virtual sales, this is the greatest gift you can give yourself. This is it. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another. Wednesday here at Virtual Solar Club, a solar sales mastermind. Oh, Thursday morning if you're in Australia. Sorry, don't want to count you guys out there. Hoping everyone is having a fantastic week. We're in the middle of it, regardless of where you are. We're in the middle of it. We're smashing goals. We're getting stuff done. Uh, or we're not, and we need some practice. Hopefully I can add some value today. Welcome, guys. A lot of uh, fresh faces, new faces, familiar faces. Exactly what I like to see. Um, a little intro, as usual, for those of you who have never been to a VSC uh, Solar Sales Mastermind. Whether you're streaming live or whether you're a VSC member and watching this replay, we have this replay and I think about 50 to 60 hours of virtual solar sales training content now uploaded into our, um, our courses and our libraries, which is absolutely awesome. Um, welcome, though, if you're new. A uh, little itinerary for what we do every single Wednesday. We hold these, um, a part of uh, the large group that is Virtual Solar Club, where we really just aim to be a resource eco ecosystem for all things virtual solar sales. So whether that's these uh, just public masterminds where we get people to vote on a topic, um, and then we, you know, I try to expand on that. Um, I've, uh, I've been in solar long enough to probably add a bit of value in certain topics, probably not so much in others. We can always keep learning. But I try to add my two cents, add some value based off the topic that's selected by the community. We throw in the, the poll on the Facebook group, uh, generally around Thursdays and Fridays, give you guys some options, let you choose uh, your own options. And uh, we just uh, have a ball of it on Wednesday, doing this for a while now. And uh, I believe we've added a lot of value to people. I love it. Love seeing people come together, use the same sales strategies and, and crush their goals in solar sales. So that's a bit about um, these masterminds, Virtual Solar Club. Many of you may know, some of you may, might be new here. Again, we offer resources. We're just a support ecosystem for everything virtual solar sales. Um, we have uh, uh, we focus on four things, a lot of training, training programs, courses. We go to virtualsolar.club. We're actually doing a 50% uh, off lifetime membership right now for this week, I believe. I'll have to check with the team. Um, then we also, uh, we have a bunch of stuff, like I said, 50 hours of training content, do these live sessions, just try to add as much value as possible. Um, then we have uh, our three other things that we focus on are leads, installation infrastructure, and tech. Um, we really just help people line up. If you're entering into virtual, if you've tried it before but haven't really gotten the results you want, um, uh, you know the, the team here has been doing it for a long, long time, well before COVID, well before the, the virtual wave hit the market. Um, so uh, you know we just support uh, people in their, their virtual solar career. It's a good time. I like it. I'm happy that everyone's here. Um, that's a bit about Virtual Solar Club. 
Um, also, as usual, guys, stick to the end. Um, like I said, we've got some uh, promos on all our virtual solar sales courses and resources right now. And, uh, shoot some uh, coupon codes up uh, at the uh, at the end to, to support you guys um, with that. Um, today, itinerary for today, our topic is motivation and mindset. So we're going to jump into that in a sec. Um, the way these work, we'll jump into that topic. Now, we're streaming on multiple different platforms here. For This is for everyone watching live, so it definitely pays to watch these live. We're on Zoom, Facebook groups, Facebook feeds, a uh, bunch of different platforms here. Regardless of where you're watching, um, everyone will have a chat box, whether it's Zoom or whether it's Facebook, uh, whatever, a live chat box. Use that chat box to your advantage. If you want me to stop and expand on a point, if you want to share your own experience, ask a question, throw some input in there. Get it in there. Throw some fire emojis if you agree. A thumbs up. A thumbs down if you don't agree. Ask questions. That's what these all are about. Um, I like the engaging. I just don't like being just a talking head. Um, if you want just talking head, again, we got like, you know, uh, weeks and weeks of footage that you can throw on there. Join the club and and uh, grab all, those, uh, uh, all that training. But these, I like it to be engaging. So ask questions. You know, throw your input in there. Have conversations in the, in the chat box. That is... Really what these are all about, to bring people together, to share knowledge and explore topics on virtual solar sales and solar sales in general. Um, so that's a bit about us. A few updates. Um, if, you, so, uh, if you don't already know, uh, SolarCon is in a week. Um, I'm sure you would have seen the, uh, the post that we got up there. Um, if you don't know what SolarCon is yet, you got to get to know. And um, that it's all over the internet. If you're in any Facebook groups or anything, you should know about it at this point. Um, SolarCon is an awesome kick-ass networking event and education event um, for specifically for solar sales reps, installation, tech, leads, everything. All the top dogs are going to be there. All of them. Um, so check that out. It's, it's a really good opportunity. Um, a few things. You know, I've been to a lot of conventions uh, in my day, whether it's solar or anything, and a lot of them are more so just trying to sell you stuff uh, you know the motivational speaker gets up and says buy my course for that's not what this is this is actually a networking convention so um, you're gonna have all the best resources um, having booths with resources for you we're gonna have guest speakers primary uh, speakers heading speakers such as um, CEOs of the largest solar companies around and all everyone that you know if you know the solar industry is going to be there it's going to be an awesome time to network shape people's hands um, get amongst you know super high performers and and um and have a bunch of resources available to you uh regardless of where you are in your journey um so a few cool things that they're doing vsc will also have a booth obviously and and then i'll also be um uh speaking on the virtual sales phone sales panel which is going to be a great time it's at the very end of the conference um, and it's also at the same time as the door-to-door -door, uh, panel. So there's two panels, the virtual and the door-to-door. -door. I think the virtual is going to take it. I think more people are going to be involved. But don't don't tell anybody. I'm not, I don't want to jinx it. But I'm just saying, man, virtual is where it's at. So it's going to be a fun time. There's a, uh, a good uh, crew of guys, all really, really good at virtual sales. We're all going to be on that panel answering questions, giving feedback and value. And there's just a bunch of stuff happening over a three-day period. It's in uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, hit it up. So a few cool things uh, with SolarCon, um, they lined up, uh, they gave us a code VSC25, so you can grab any any tickets for 25% off if you use that uh, through us. And then also, they threw in a MacBook into the picture, they're like, Josh, look, we want to we wanna, uh, reward people for coming to SolarCon. So if you use VSC25, go to attendsolarcon.com, grab your tickets and show up, uh, you might be entered into a pool to get a bloody MacBook, which is awesome. Uh, MacBook and uh, is one of the key tools for any virtual salesperson. So that's going to be awesome. Super excited to meet all you guys there. And uh, uh, come by the VSC booth, have a chat with me. Um, it's going to be a good time. Three days of shenanigans, after parties. It's going to be fun. Um, but today we have a topic. And that topic is mindset and uh, motivation in solar sales. So... Um, I want to go over this because, you know, it, looking at sales strategies, which is what we do every single week, is, is great. I can teach you how to close more deals. I can teach you how to book more appointments, what to say, the tonality to use, the structure, the script, the tech, the dialers, the CRMs, all that. But I think there is a massive, massive piece of the puzzle that a lot of people miss um, when terms of maximizing their efficiency and productivity. And that's uh, mindset, motivation, mental health, physical health. It's all boiled into one thing. You could have 
the craziest setup, the best opportunities. But if your mindset isn't there, if your motivation isn't properly incentivized and driven towards the right point, you're not going to get much. Um, and, uh, you know, if you've been in business long enough and, and, you know, intensive sales long enough, you probably know this by now. It's a really important thing to do. And it's not just some like, uh, oh, you know, make sure your mental health is there, man. I don't do it because people on, you know, uh, TikTok are telling me to take care of my mental health. I do it because it increases my results, right? It gets me more, it, it increases my performance, gets me more results. It increases my success level. That's why I do it. I'm not doing it because it's just cool to check your mental health these days. It literally motivates you to double, triple your results. If you're in the dumps, if you're seeing the world negatively, even regardless of the opportunity that's laid in front of you, you're not going to be able to su succeed as much as someone who has a clear vision, who has a, a positive motivation and a mindset and is working towards the same goal. In fact, you meet a lot of these ultra successful people. They were not born into privilege, not born into opportunity. They were born into a very negative environment. But what did they do? They turned it around into a positive environment. This is a classic example of, of uh, you know, ultra successful people because they had to. They had to get their motivation down. They had to fix their mindset. So I want to touch on that. Lay down some infrastructure and some things that I've learned over the years that specifically with solar sales, um, you know, what is important to look at and what's important to, uh, to pay attention to. So that's our topic today. Again, we're going to jump into it now. Use those chat boxes to your advantage if you're, wa if you're watching this stream live. Uh, if you're not, you're watching the replay. Uh, comments might be available so you can follow along. But if you're watching this right now live, use that chat box. Get your questions in there um, and, uh, you know, engage and uh, ask people questions and, and uh, uh, you know, have a good time. Throw some fire emojis in there. Ruby already posts here in our Zoom chat. I could use a MacBook. I use VSC for my ticket. Boom. Fingers crossed, Ruby. Uh, uh, hopefully, uh, you, you have some luck there. Uh, VSC is also going to be giving out some prizes at uh, SolarCon, some free leads, maybe a, a, a set of AirPods or two. So who knows? You might be the lucky winner. But let's jump right in, guys. Mindset, motivation, and solar sales. Let's tackle this. Let's see what we got. So off the bat, as usual, here's a little itinerary. Um, I want to go over some of the struggles that everyone should expect in solar sales. There's specific struggles. There's general struggles. It's important to, to, to set out knowing what you're going to have to deal with, right? Um, no one ever uh, looked at Everest and said, okay, I see the top of that mountain. I just want to get there. They didn't do that. They said, okay, we have this ice wall here, this cliff over here. We got to climb up this steep here. It gets really cold over here. We got to bring supplies for this. They prepared. They knew the struggles that were in front of them and they were prepared to tackle them, right? So don't go in blind. We're going to take a look at the struggles. Uh, we're going to take a look at why solar sales is actually worth it because it's a pain in the ass sometimes. Don't get me wrong. It's not always uh, peaches and rainbows. It's a pain in the ass and anyone in solar sales knows that. But is it worth it? I want to take a look at that. Is it? And if so, what does that look like in the future if we stick in? Um, then I want to go over the importance of positive thinking, mindset, and solar sales and what can actually do for your performance. Uh, I've already touched on it a bit, but it's deadly important. If you're not, you know, honing in your, your mindset, if you're not thinking in a positive manner, don't have proper goals set up and uh, a structure for you, good luck, my friend. Good luck. Um, and finally, I just want to boil things down into five little mindset hacks that I've, I've sort of come up with over the years, what I've seen other people do and what I've done myself that will positively impact not just your mental health because it's cool to have good mental health these days because it affects your performance. That's the main reason you're doing this and how it affects solar sales and how we can directly relate it to specifically solar sales. All right. Um, cool. Let's jump straight in. So struggles. Let's start with some struggles. The biggest struggles in sales, in solar sales, regardless of what it is, rejection around every corner, man. If you enter into this industry or someone tries to sell you on the dream that you're never going to have rejection, that you're never going to have someone that tell you, that tells you no, that you're never going to have someone that says, I got to think about it. I'm not interested. Stop calling me. Stop knocking on my door. You have been lied to or you've, you've lied to, to yourself and you're not setting yourself up properly for success. You have to understand that when you are in sales or life in general, you're going to find rejection. It's not a matter of if it's a matter of when and it's a matter of how you handle that rejection. OK, super important. Regardless of where you are as well, you might just be entering into sales now, might just be entering into solar now, uh, or you could be in it for a year, five years, 10 years. 
Next year is my ninth year in solar. That's a long time to be in solar, and I am still learning this lesson. This is an ongoing lesson that you'll need to learn. Rejection happens. You got to be prepared for it. Number two, a lack of safety net in commission-only sales. Ooh, I like this one. I'm a commission guy. I haven't worked a nine to five or got a you know a sort of a base salary, I guess you would call it, um, since I was 16, 17. So I'm a commissions guy. Um, I've always I always love that factor of it, it's what I put in is what I'm going to take out. I determine my paycheck. There's no cap, right? I love that. But if you are not used to that, well, first off, welcome to to potentially looking at it and, and looking at uh, solar sales. Um, there is a, a very big thing that you're going to need to overcome because that safety net disappears. Now, if you're used to that, if you're if you've grown up with that safety net, knowing that as long as you just show up, you're going to be able to pay rent. Sometimes this is a massive hurdle that uh, uh, you know is very difficult to overcome. But if you want to take it to the next level, if you want to break free of you know the the, the something that's holding you down right now. Something that's, uh, you know, you feel you're not, you know, being, um, you feel you're not being looked at as valuable. You feel you have more potential. The first thing that you're going to want to do is break out of that nine to five structure, that hourly wage structure. One of the first things. Jump into that commission only uh, structure. Now, solar sales is generally only commission, especially right now where we are. Um, in the future, for example, what we saw in Australia, you'll see a lot more, you know, uh, paycheck solar sales people. These are the guys that are making, you know, nine to five, they can 10, 15, 20 bucks an hour, and they're making 50 bucks a deal when they close. Now, that's not the type of solar sales I'm interested in. I'm more, I'm more interested in the high margin uh, solar sales and making a, a good amount of money. And that's the type of situation that we're in right now. So if you want to enter into that, break free of, you know, what you feel is holding you down with that nine to five, with that standard monotonous structure, run to the commission only jobs. Don't be afraid of it. It's going to teach you a lot, but that safety net is something that you need to be mindful of that it's going to disappear from you. Um, that safety net will be replaced with your work ethic. I, I far, far more trust my work ethic and my ability to get results than any one company uh, paying me a check every week, far more. Uh, and that's what you want to aim for, right? And, and I try to also, you know, improve that mindset for myself. Number three, a lack of support and resources. Now, this is going to be dependent on who you work with, what you get involved in. There is a horrible, horrible pandemic of lack of resources, lack of training, lack of support in the solar sales space right now. One of the primary reasons that um, I started Virtual Solar Club uh, was because I saw that lack of support. Um, you know, this was not... Uh, this is a very, very, is a side hobby just to, you know, start a community of virtual solar sales people. Virtual Solar Club was born out of the, the uh, intrinsic uh, reality that people right now are getting screwed over. People right now are, are jumping in and getting contracts or red lines and then just getting the old, uh, hey, now you have a red line, come back to me when you have your first deal. Zero support, zero structure, zero training, zero tech, zero infrastructure. Uh, it's a it's a pandemic. I know people that have come to us, for example, um, I would consider us having relatively good infrastructure, I would hope so, with a name like Virtual Solar Club, uh, relatively good infrastructure and training and, and support. And, uh, you know, they're just they're looking at us like, cool, well, I want to work with you guys. But these guys over here, you know, and I know the guys that they're talking about, I know they don't have the greatest support structure, but the, the wool is uh, uh, pulled over their eyes, right? Um, and there's such a big difference between really having support and resources and not. And unfortunately, a lot of people are getting sold into it right now. Digital marketers, I'll promise you 50 deals a month. Um, uh, you know, installers, I'll, I'll supply you leads, all, all these things. So you do need to be prepared for that. Um, obviously, it's, it's, not, it's more difficult to provide good support and resources than it is to, to not do it. So a majority of of, uh, of people out there will, will fail at that. You need to be prepared to not only look for it, we've done a, a bunch of training and masterminds on really looking for support and uh, when you're just starting or when you wanna move up, but not just get that, but also um, know how to look for the people that are gonna screw you over. You know, it's pretty easy, man. Look for the words like guaranteed, promises, they talk in absolutes. 
This is solar sales. This is the front line war. You're going to guarantee me something? You're going to guarantee me results? BS. Come on, let's be realistic here, right? So uh, pay attention to that because uh, lack of support and resources could hurt you. Uh, and that is definitely a struggle, especially when you're just in the industry and you're just figuring it out. Man, I, again, I've been in this industry for the past decade and I'm still figuring stuff out, man. I can't imagine the, the, the landscape when you're just entering in right now, all the BS you have to put up with people promising you things and not giving you the right support. So pay attention to that, right? It, it should be high on your list. Number four, a harsh learning curve with new strategies. For example, virtual sales. COVID hits. What does everyone do? Everyone was basing their operation off of door-to-door -door sales and everyone scrambles to figure out the uh, virtual game. When that happens, there is uncertainty. For let's say, um, what if uh, net metering get NEM 3.0 gets gets killed or gets uh, introduced in California? What are you going to do? Net metering's you know uh, dropped down. You're going to have to come up with new strategies. Um, what happens with um, you know your installer runs away with ten of your jobs? You know you got six figures of commissions you know lined up in your pipeline and poof disappears. You got to be prepared uh, to 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 move quick to adapt to the market. Um, when, when negative things happen to, to, to learn new strategies quick. And that is a struggle that you're going to have to, especially with solar, how fast moving this bloody industry is, but I've been in so many different versions of this industry, um, over, over the past few years, it's, it's insane. So you got to be prepared for that. That is a struggle you'll come across, um, prepare yourself, expect it and, uh, uh, embrace the, the, the ability to, to figure out new strategies and, and learn new methods. Number four, number five, bad days and weeks guaranteed. This is Matt. I mean, this is the one of the very first things that I tell people that come onto our teams. You will have bad days. You will have bad weeks. The important, you know, is consistency and work ethic to, to make up for them. Um, it is not all rainbows and butterflies. There are always errors. There's always bad weeks. There's always bad customers. Prepare for it. Don't uh, expect it to not happen. Don't brush it to the side. Expect it. Expect the bad days to happen and think about how you would react to them before they even happen. Uh, that's a really good um, you know, tool to use. If you, you know, not think about the negative, but think, all right, look, this is gonna happen. When it does, I'm gonna make sure I'm thinking about this. I'm staying positive and doing this. And you're preparing yourself, right? So prepare for that struggle. It is absolutely something that everyone, regardless of where you are in your solar career, is going to run into. Number six, natural desire to blame external factors for lack of success. Yes, I put this as a struggle. This is a struggle. When you have, uh, and this, again, like I said, it's natural. When something goes down, you always want to blame the external factors. It's not my fault. It's their fault. They, they pulled the rug over here. They screwed me over here. The leads are garbage. The, 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 the tech is bad. The install timeframes are taking too long. My commission's not high enough. My red line's not low enough. Oh, my goodness. That is a struggle that you need to overcome in yourself. That is an internal struggle because you don't hear the top performer saying that. What do you hear them doing? Calling more people, knocking more doors, closing more deals while you're sitting in the corner crying that uh, something happened to you over here. It's not gonna help you. That is a struggle, an internal struggle that you need to prepare for. And when you observe yourself doing it, which is probably the most difficult part, um, fix it, right? And change your mindset. Um, so a few struggles there. Um, and uh, if you guys have any um, uh, uh, struggles that you've run into as well, feel free to, to throw them in the chat um, so everyone would, uh, can, can know there are uh, other struggles out there. Jamie Wright says, would be crazy starting right now knowing what I know. Um, yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, if you... 100%, if you knew all the BS that you had to put through and you could restart knowing to, to navigate it a bit better, imagine what could happen. I'm in a really interesting position, actually, uh, Jamie, um, in that I've already seen the market and a lot of uh, the guys from the Australian market have come to the US market and we already know what's going to happen because it's played out in Australia pretty much, um, you know, back to back. So it's a, a cool little time machine. Um, but you know what, you can apply that to, to, to just markets in general. We all know what happens with markets, race to the bottom tendencies, infrastructure, overregulation. You know, these are things that we can prepare for and, and learn from history. We don't specifically have to have, you know, had them uh, firsthand. But I completely understand what you mean. If I knew what I knew now and I started my solar journey again nine years ago, oh, game over. Game over, right? That would be fantastic. All right. 
So let's uh, move on from the struggles. Let's go to some things that are worth it here. Now, I've shown a few of these things before, but this gets me going, man. The U.S. market, I, I understand if you're just in the U.S. market, you haven't seen other markets, you haven't seen how markets play out, um, that uh, you might not get as excited as I do. But I want to shed some light on what the future of this really looks like. That if you stick in this, what you're going to be looking at, and it's pretty damn exciting. Number one, solar's the future. There is immense opportunity and long-term growth here. Solar is the future. Um, and if that's not clear to everybody, then, uh, you know, open your eyes, man. It is taking over by storm. Uh, whether it's um, uh, your uh, government subsidies increasing, whether it's a market getting to know it more, uh, or whether it's a push for, for clean energy or resources and infrastructure and uh, manufacturing, improving processes to decrease costs, it is taking over by storm. We've seen it in a lot of different countries, and we're right at the beginning of that in the U.S. It is one of the fastest growing industries on the planet, if not the fastest. Someone can fact check me on that. It is a very large margin and market, especially in the U.S., man. We've got like a third of a billion people in this country. This is nutty. This is an insanely large market, and the market penetration is super low. And the way things are set up right now is... The, the margin's always going to be there. Now, I don't know if you guys um, were tuned into our last week's stream, but I went over what the margin currently looks like in Australia. And you can get a, um, you know, like I said, sales reps are getting paid about 50 bucks for a deal. And if you're selling at premium pricing, you know, maybe a few hundred dollars, you know, uh, depending on who you're selling with. The reason for that is because the infrastructure, the subsidies, the finance options are not set up the way that the U.S. are. Um, and the U.S. is set up very uh, uniquely in which our finance options, Sunlight, for example, shout out Sunlight just released a 30-year finance option with a 600 FICO and a 1.99% interest rate. The monthly that you can get out of that versus the customer's last bill and their upcoming bills is ridiculously low. It is fantastic to see the long-term growth here of what we're going to do because we're always going to be able to make great money and we're always going to be able to uh, save people money with solar. It's just the, the longevity of this market is just ridiculous. Um, it's a very high-intensity learning environment. Not a lot of people understand, you know, well, uh, hopefully a, a few people do, but not enough people realize that when you're in a high-intensity uh, market that's breaking you down, challenging you constantly, you are growing. Or at least you have the opportunity to grow. We're going to get into you know failure and embracing failure in a sec here, but um, you know that high intensity is is growth versus you sitting at a desk taking calls, doing admin work. Come on, I'm pretty sure anyone watching this doesn't want to fall into that that uh, that spot, right? As uh, I believe it was Warren Buffett, I see this quote all the time. I've never actually seen it live, but uh, I, I like it. Uh, Warren Buffett says solar and renewable energy. Um, and energy uh, in general will be the largest redistribution of wealth in history. Uh, because who holds the money right now? Traditional energy. And uh, who's making waves right now? Renewables. It's amazing to see this happen. And uh, some people don't deserve it. You know, I've seen a few kids jump into solar sales and six months down the line, they're driving uh, McLarens and uh, they're not properly managing their finances. But uh, it's just the nature of the beast, right? Um, do it uh, properly. There's a lot of opportunity here, not just for wealth, for growth, uh, for business, but uh, a lot of uh, impact that you can make. And there is still, lastly, an extremely large room for growth. Ultra, I'm going to get into some numbers in a sec here to show you this with some stats. I like stats. I'm a numbers guy, but the, the room for growth here is phenomenal. When, when we first discovered the U.S. market from the Australian market, um, and now that I'm bringing uh, more of the Australian crew over to the U.S. market, we looked at it and we thought it was we thought it wasn't we thought it was like a scam. We're like, there's, there's no way that the U.S. is the way it is now. And we still have this much growth. It was so un difficult to understand um, what a young market really looked like. But I meet people every week that think the U.S. market is dead and, and, and is mature. It's just not the case. I want to take some look at some stats and bat back my. Uh, my stuff up here, um, but uh, it is an exciting time uh, to be in solar for sure. Um, Ruby says, uh, "Commission only is the way." I was always, uh, I was always to make the jump, but back in 2018, I did, and by far the best. 
Uh, I have money for therapy now. Boom. Yeah, I love it. You can afford uh, to keep track of your mental health. Love it. Uh, absolutely. Commission only for the win. Um, okay, let's keep going here. Let's get some stats up in here. I, I've shown this a few times. I want to reshow it. So this is a, um, a graph here of showing our growth of uh, sort of online sales. And this is just to throw a little uh, fire into the virtual side of solar sales. And I don't think I need to show this to, to a lot of people. You damn well know what's happening with virtual. But if you were to take 2014, man, I don't, man, 2014, this time has flown way too fast for me to look at the end of this graph and it's 2014. <laughs> oh, man. But 2014, um, you can tell, what is this, uh, 5x, 6x of, of what's happened just since 2014. People are, are looking to buy online, to buy virtual, and that's just going to explode the virtual solar sales game um, and give you amazing opportunity and growth as people get more and more and more comfortable to buy online and buy virtually and buy over the phone. Um, so that's, a, that's an exciting thing uh, um, all on its own. But let's also take a look at the solar market. So <clears throat> we can see here um, some percent of annual electricity generation by country. Um, I also looked up... Um, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, renewable energy generation by G, um, GDP. Um, but for example here, now for those of us who think the U.S. market is super mature and is super competitive, well, we would expect it to be right at the front then, surely. But it's not. It's nowhere close. Honduras, uh, they've pretty much got all renewables. Israel, Germany, Chile, and Australia are killing it in solar. Like I said, Australia is the market that I grew up in. It is um, obviously Honduras is a bit different, small country, but those four in the top, Israel, Germany, Chile, and Australia, the uh, market penetration is ridiculously high. We're talking 40, 50, 60%. Um, whereas in the, the US, boop, 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 2.3%, 2.5%, ridiculously low. Um, we're not even at scratching the surface. Um, and uh, I believe I looked at um, uh, another graph recently for this 2022 stat. Uh, U.S. is the 11th, just the 11th highest um, uh, fastest growing or, or um, uh, producing uh, country in the world in terms of its GDP. So not overall, obviously, because then you get high population like China, India, and, and U.S. to be up there. But relative to the population, the amount of solar that is currently going on in this country is not anywhere close um, to what the real big dogs are doing and what we're looking at mature markets. This is an immature market. We're right beside Portugal and South Africa, man. There's so much room for growth. So your future here, if you crack the code of solar sales, and if you crack the code of virtual solar sales, you have so much room to grow. It's somewhere that you can stay, find a home, and have consistent, good results, good money, and uh, you know a, a really solid long-term uh, path for yourself. This is where you need to be. What other numbers do I have for you here? Um, the U.S. market is an absolute perfect storm. And again, I don't need to, to explain this, but let's put it out there. Energy costs are sky rating, skyrocketing. PG&E put their rates up by 18% recently. CPS just overcharged their customers by $2 billion in San Antonio and then put their rates up by like 13% or have a plan to put them by 13% to make up for it. Energy companies are skyrocketing rates. Inflation is 7, 7 8% this year. People are paying more for the same thing. Solar is not like that. Solar locks in for 25, 30 years. At, at certain points, it's a negative interest rate. This is a no-brainer for people when you're looking at the increasing costs all around and energy costs and uh, inflation that we're seeing. Our infrastructure is improving. Installers are, are, are figuring stuff out. Regulations and um, uh, permitting is getting standardized. If anyone has heard of uh, you know, the standardized permitting process that's uh, we're, you know, trying to, to, to uh, get going in the industry right now, permitting obviously being one of the uh, most uh, delayed uh, process for for installation um, Australia for example standardized their process and you could get a pre-approval of permitting within uh, a minute you enter the customer information their meter number click yes they get pre-approved based off of the area uh, what the uh, area's infrastructure can handle and the nameplate the um, 
uh, uh, system size that you're you're throwing in there, the output of the system. Um, we will see that in the US. So install timeframes are just going to chunk down like crazy across the board. Cash flow is going to increase. Commission checks are going to get quicker. Scalability is going to be uh, uh, higher. It's going to be a good time. The future is bright. The market is also starting to hear about solar. When you're in markets that really don't know what's going on, so we're talking mm, California is you know, a bit more advanced than most, but um, generally across the country, up until what, uh, two, three, four years ago, you said solar and people were like, what the hell is solar? Now people are starting to learn. Now, a lot of us look at it as though that's negative and as though that's competition and the customer knows more, but I, I disagree. There's a sweet spot of the customer knowing about solar, knowing that it could be beneficial for them, knowing someone that had good results, and now they're more open to the idea of it. And I like that sweet spot. That's why I like to live. Because put me up against anyone else in solar and I'll beat them. But now at least my customer understands the concept of solar and that it's beneficial for them, right? So that's my sweet spot. I don't think we've hit that yet. I think across the board, California is probably there. Um, but across the board, we're still looking at a good one to two year uh, spot of people warming up to solar and figuring out, oh, wow, yeah, I'm probably going to get it in the future. So I might as well just look at it now, right? Especially while incentives are still here. Um, uh, uh, talking about incentives, new rebates, rebates and incentives are popping up. We had this uh, Build Back Better, I believe was the bill. Um, that was an exciting time. I, I, I hope something happens with that. If anybody doesn't know that, that was a bill introduced um, that uh, would have increased the, um, this is the, the rough uh, definition, would have increased the ITC back to 30% and, uh, until 2030, something crazy like that. Um, and uh, a few other things. One big thing that I didn't really see anybody pick up on in that bill is there was some sort of wording about government um, subsidies for equipment. Now, we've never had this before, um, but uh, in, in the US, in Australia, though, we have. It's called STCs, Small Technology Certificates. And what it was, and what it still is, it was a, a, a decreasing subsidy, a government subsidy that subsidized the cost of equipment. And that did amazing things um, for uh, uh, the cost of, of what we could do. Um, you know, it halved the, 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 the cost of equipment. Um, and we've never had anything like that before in uh, the U.S. widespread. So there's a, there's a lot of new different incentives, um, battery rebates, as Jamie brings up, batteries, um, government incentives, rebates. We have our SREX. We have awesome things like so uh, South Carolina, ten, you know, 10 grand on a system thrown at them. Obviously, we have the ITC. There's so much. Um, the federal, obviously, is the ITC. That's the one that's going down. But state rebates are popping up. There is a lot. Utility-specific rebates are popping up. I don't think that we are ending the era of incentives. I think we're at the beginning of it, and I think there's going to be an extension and an increase of it for a good period of time, especially with this administration. We'll see. Hopefully. We're crossing fingers, though. Um, lastly, the market wants independence. Man, we're having the snowstorm in uh, Texas. We're having the wildfires in California. People are dependent on these utility companies that are giving them blackouts. Storms happening in Georgia and the, the East Coast. People want independence. People don't want to have to rely on a utility provider to, to always be providing them energy. They want something for themselves. They want to own their power, and that's getting more and more apparent every single day. Again, the perfect storm. All these things are coming together right now. This is no, We're not at the end of this storm. We're at the very beginning of this. And if you guys remember, at the beginning of 2022, um, we did a, a session called 2022, the, the, the start, the upcoming solar boom, the year of uh, virtual solar sales. We're only just starting now. The, the, our future is very bright here. Uh, again, salespeople are jumping uh, the ship to solar, meaning more people are getting used to it. Infrastructure is improving. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing for you right now. COVID has caused a mini reset of solutions. Because of COVID, people have been locked in. They're like, all right, I need to find a solution. What I have right now, it hasn't worked. For the past two years, I've, you know, my life's turned upside down. What are the other options out there for, for you? It opens people up to alternative solutions. The solar boom has only just started. We are not in the middle of it. We're not at the end of it. I promise you, we are at the beginning of it. And you need to prepare yourself for that. If you're, you want to get serious about this, this is the time. This year is when you need to, to, to put action down because it's going to be an absolute roller coaster, absolute solar coaster, as they say. I think we, we coined that term in Australia about uh, 10, 15 years ago. But it's going to be a good time. We are at the beginning of it. 
and um, the the uh, excitement, the exciting things, and the the really intense uh, market is ahead of us, not behind us. Um, accessibility has also never been better. The world is now digital. Virtual sales are booming. Virtual solar sales empowers location independence. This is something I preach, and I don't feel feel enough uh, people do this. Virtual solar sales doesn't just mean that you can sell from your office or you can sell from your home without um, you know going to the customer's property. Virtual sales, virtual solar sales means that you can now be that digital nomad that you wanted to be when you were younger. Go to the countries that you wish you had gone to. Travel the world, move, go to a different market. Don't have to be locked down to where you are right now and still make a killing and still have an impact, impact on the world. Virtual solar sales is an absolute life hack. I've been using it for a very long time. I have literally lived in every single continent, yes, including Antarctica, selling solar from my computer. Um, and that's what I did for a really, really long time. I kept it hush, built a small team around it, scaled it up a few times. It was amazing. And now people are just catching on to it. So I guess I'll tell you how to do it. <laughs> but it is an amazing solution and it empowers people that originally couldn't do that. I love, uh, we have a lot of overseas uh, admin, a lot of overseas salespeople um, and or, or offshore, you know, uh, international. It allows them to do it, let alone you. It allows them to jump into this and absolutely uh, make more money than they've ever made before and uh, be location independent. It is so amazing giving someone an opportunity or showing someone an opportunity that allows them to get out of their house, get out of their neighborhood, get out of the city that they've li grew, lived and grown up in, travel the world and still make an, uh, an absolute killing, right? And all the benefits that come with virtual solar sales, but it is worth it is what I'm trying to say. It is in my opportunity, solar sales, specifically virtual solar sales is the perfect skill slash opportunity that you can learn to change the trajectory of your life right now. And that might sound real hardcore, but when you think about it, the money that's in it and the ability for you to do it virtually and the market that is right in front of us, man, when, when will you jump in if not now, right? Anyone can take advantage of this. If you do this properly, you can be successful at it. You can get grokking uh, the tech, the resources that you have available at your fingertips and the market right in front of you um, is there for the taking. There are literally no more excuses. Um, I would like to think that we're helping people doing that. I love to see that. And uh, there's a lot of other people um, being successful in it, but it is worth it. Put your time, put your energy into getting this rocking for yourself. If you want to pick yourself up from where you are now and uh, get into a different place by this time next year, this time next uh, in six months. If not now, then when? The solar industry right now right now is a once in a lifetime opportunity in 10 years i promise you in 10 years you're going to be looking back on this and if you didn't give it your all if you didn't say all right look i'm putting this to the side i'm putting all this other stuff to the side i'm giving up you know uh, my social life right now to get this rocking so that in 10 years i'm in a much better place my family's in a better place i can do whatever i want i can have the freedom to do whatever i want if you haven't done that and you're looking at solar right now, which you're literally on virtual solar club stream. So you are, and you haven't put in the energy, the time, the money, whatever it takes to, to get to, to that point, you're going to regret it. And I've said this before. I'll say it again. I will not be the person that regrets that. I will not look back in 10 years and say, I could have done more. I could have done better. I, I could have had an opportunity, but I, I, I wanted to just keep it safe. Stay, stay in, in, on my couch, watch Netflix, watch YouTube instead. I will not be that person and it's up to you to, to, to make that decision, right? This is right now probably one of the greatest opportunities like we have in our intro that any of us will ever have that's right in front of us over the next year, okay? The market is perfect and ripe for the taking. The personal and professional growth is long-term. Um, this is the time and if it's not now, then when is it, right? Um, uh, and so that's up to you to decide. I can't make that decision for you, but it's really good to think about in yourself in 10 years. Will you be the person that's regretful or will you look back and be like, thank God that uh, I looked at solar at the time I did and I went full on with it, right? Um, it is worth it. It is worth jumping in. I promise you put the energy in, put the time in, whatever it takes, figure it out. Here's my five hacks to, to, to maintain your motivation and your mindset. 
And also, guys, keep uh, shooting through your comments and questions if you have any qu uh, anything at all. Pedro uh, Jimenez says, hello. Hey, Pedro, what's going on? Uh, Jamie says, I'm buying a fifth wheel and going wherever. Do it. I literally have an RV in my parking lot uh, right now in my driveway. And I take that. I bring my, my laptop. I get a little 3G, 4G device, and I go. Go to uh, all around. And obviously, as uh, a lot of you may know, I, I, I travel a lot. I spend probably three, four, five months around the Caribbean, around Mexico and Belize um, every single year. I, I've been doing that for a very long time. I have friends, uh, all the hotel owners know me now. Oh, that's Josh. He works in solar. <laughs> it's just what I do. And anybody can do it. That's the thing. That's the really cool thing right now. I'm not that special, especially right now with all the tech and stuff available. So grab, get in your fifth wheeler, jump in a plane, go on a road trip. You can do it. Grab a 4G device, get all the tools, get the training done, um, get your computer and rock. You don't need an office anymore. Those days are over. So it's a fantastic time. Um, keep me updated, Jamie. I want to know where you go. <laughs> number one, number one hack. We're going to finish it off with these things here. And again, guys, uh, stay tuned here. Um, I'm going to, uh, uh, throw in some, uh, links to some, uh, training, uh, programs. Uh, at the end of this week, we, we finish. Um, but I think we're like 50% off our virtual solar sales course at this. I'm going to throw some in, stick to the end guy. We're going to smash through these five hacks and, uh, see you guys off for the, the rest of the evening. Number one, Work ethic and the four kings rule. There's always opportunity. Keep going. Don't stop because of perceived failure. Others will succeed where and if you failed, uh, failed if you stop and put the hours in every day. The four kings. I'm sure many have heard me say this before. You grab a deck of card, uh, cards, right? Everyone knows watching this, watching the replay, watching the stream, that there are four kings and a deck of cards. You throw that deck of cards on the ground, all facing down. Your job, to find the four kings, to find the, the four customers, to find the four appointments, to find the four sales, whatever you want to call them. So you start picking up the cards. You want to find those four kings. You start knocking the doors. You start making calls. You start um, uh, uh, closing deals or trying to close deals or going to consultations. Um, but what happens? The first four, hey, maybe the first four you could pick up and they're all kings. But is that going to happen? Are you going to set yourself up for that expectation that, yeah, the first four I'm going to smash? Probably not. Probably not a good thing to do. So you could pick them up, but it's probably not going to happen. So let's keep picking those cards up. One by one, one by one, get to 10, get to 20, get to 30. You're at 40 cards now and there's no kings. What's going on? Now you could go to yourself and you could say, look, I picked up 40 cards at this point and I can't find a single king. I've knocked for five hours straight. And I haven't spoken to anybody. I've called 100 people, 300 people. I've done five, six hours of calling today. And I, I, all I got was voicemails. And you could stop there. That's a decision that you could make. You could make that decision. But should you make that decision? Because the person who knows there's always four kings in a, a deck of cards is going to think, you know what? That only means I'm closer to my kings. I'm going to keep knocking. I'm going to keep picking cards up. I'm going to keep getting on the phones. Maybe not today. Maybe not tomorrow but I'm going to find my four kings because I know they're in here. And they pick up, you pick up, you pick up. And what do you know? There's four kings in the deck as there always are. There's four opportunities in a day, in a week, in a month, however you want to set your goals up. They are always there because other people are finding them. If other people are finding them and you're giving an excuse, your excuse is BS. That's the cold, hard truth. If other people are succeeding in exactly what you're doing and you're not succeeding, it's not because they have some magical formula. You've got the, the resources they have. Keep putting the work in. Keep your mindset positive. There's always four kings. There's always four opportunities there for you to grab. You just need to understand that so you don't stop right at the last moment when you would have you know started getting into your successes. Number two, brick wall the negativity. We use a terminology in our, our sales training called brick wall, and that's to engage uh, customers and spouses. This is different. What I mean by this is, Great example. You have a customer, you're doing an appointment setting call, you're closing a deal, you're in home, you're not door knocking, and someone yells at you. Well, welcome to sales, because people yell at you. It's not all rainbows and butterflies. Someone yells at you, and you have future appointments. Now, you could make a decision right now, and you could say, okay, well, look, um, someone yelled at me, I'm going to let that affect me, and uh, consciously or not, uh, you're going to uh, get in there and with your next customer and apply that negativity to, to, to them and they're going to see that and it's going to affect your results. So instead, 
what the decision that you can make, for example, one that I have made many, many times. Let's say you're in home. Let's say you're virtual. Customer just yelled at you. Customer said no. Customer kicked you out of the house. Customer said they're not interested. And you're sitting down in your car. Or you're sitting down at your desk. And you're like, all right. I got an appointment in 10 minutes. I still feel bad. The customer yelled at me. I didn't close that deal. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a brick bloody wall in front of me. And the second I flip this switch, I'm going to count to five. I'm going to close my eyes and count to five. And the second I finish on five, uh, that's going to be behind me. I'm going to be fresh. I'm going to completely forget about that at least till the end of the day so that my next opportunity is not negatively affected by it. One, two, three, four, five. Game time. Let's go. Really important that you do this because if you're preparing for negativity, you got to be able to handle it properly so that it does not affect your future results. Right? Don't let rejection cancellations affect your next pitch. Focus on the growth of failure and embrace it. Understand negativity comes from within. You're blaming yourself. Stop. Uh, um, uh, your, sorry, your mindset is coming from within. No one else controls your mindset. You do. Someone yells at you, cancel the deal, says no. Your boss yells at you. The negativity is coming from your brain, from chemistry in your brain. That's how the brain works. So figure that out, understand that, and understand because of that, you also have the ability to swap it around and turn it into a positive. Look to the future, to your future appointments, to your future goals, not your past failures, your past pains. Sounds stereotypical, but it has to be said. Because if you don't have that down, you can't use uh, any other strategies because those are the fundamentals, right? Number three, failure is a positive. Um, I am um, so, I love this. Now, this sounds so stereotypical. And I would always used to hear, you know, embrace your failure, all this. But man, when you actually figure this out, when you actually look at that failure and look at it as a positive, it changes your life, changes your life. And even if it's just placebo, maybe some of you watching live or somebody watching the replay is like, oh, it doesn't really change your life. It just makes you feel warm and fuzzy at the moment. Placebos work, especially in sales. When you feel that uh, you need a little boost of energy, you get a little placebo. Someone tells you it's a caffeine pill. You feel good and you start closing deals. Even if it's just a placebo, even if it's just a uh, yeah, cheap little motivation trick, it works. Look at your mistakes. Say, okay, this is how I screwed up. Now I know not to waste time on that strategy again. I love that. For example, digital marketing, really good example. Your job is to figure out what doesn't work and what does work as, as soon as possible. So one of the first things you do is called A-B testing. And for example, scripts, you can do the same thing. You start throwing out sales strategies, throwing out lines. Customers respond negatively, customers respond positively. And you compile what works and what doesn't. But if you never learn, if you never look at that negativity and say, cool, I can learn from this. Um, then you're just going to keep repeating the same thing over and over and over again and never get any different results. Uh, and that's what a lot of people do because they don't see that that, uh, that failure is literally a, a, um, a learning potential. So learn from your mistakes. See failure as a learning opportunity and growth. Don't run from failure. Look for it. The more you fail, the more opportunity you have and the, the lower the probability of you uh, repeating that uh, moment of failure in your, your uh, sales career, in your sales pitch. You want to fail as hard and as fast. This is the line that I give all my new starters and new reps. You want to fail as hard and as fast as you possibly can when you first start out so that you know what works and what doesn't work so you don't have to repeat um, those things and get straight to, to what is working instead as quick as possible. Okay? Um, Number four, let's keep rocking here. Form positive habits early. If you're starting in sales or if you've been in sales, you might need to unlearn some negative habits, but train yourself to not fall into the negative spirals. In, um, if anyone's an online gamer here, uh, what's the terminology that people use? Um, snowball, uh, snowball, there's a terminology. When you have a negativity, you let it bleed over, you just start snowballing. I think that's negativity. Um, Tilt, tilt, tilting. That's the, the terminology in gaming. You start tilting, right? So imagine a, a, a horizontal bar and there's a, there's a ball right on it and it's balancing because it's horizontal. The second you start tilting negatively, what does that ball do? 
it starts moving over to the, way, the, 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 the spot that it's tilting. And because the ball's extra weight is now there, the bar turns quicker. And so the ball rolls down quicker. It snowballs and it has that tilt effect. Don't tilt. Get your head out of it. You, you find yourself, you observe yourself in a negative headspace. Stop, reset, get going. At least save it for the night. Have a cry at the night. Let it go at the night. But during the day, it's game time. During the game, it's positively and you're moving forward. Right? Number two, always look at the bigger picture in front of you. If you see this as a long-term thing, who the hell cares about what happened to you yesterday? If you want a positive uh, 10, 15, 20 years, who the hell cares about what happened last week? Or that you didn't hit your, your goal uh, yesterday? Or that someone told you to screw off uh, uh, an hour ago? It's irrelevant. Completely irrelevant. If you're really focused on the long-term aspect, you want to com uh, completely disregard all that negativity that's happening to you minute by minute and start focusing on what you can do long-term, hour by hour, day by day, month by month, year by year, decade by decade. Where do you want to be in 10 years? Forget about where you were you know, two hours ago, right? Have a bigger picture on things. Number three, don't get addicted to self-pity. This is a big one. Um, if When we start to fail... We start feeling sorry for ourselves. We start feeling, oh, woe is me. The world hates me. The world is out to get me. I'm the most unluckiest person in the world. I just wasn't meant to succeed. Shut the hell up. That is not a winner's attitude. Stop with the self-pity BS. Reset, get your head in the game, and move forward. Anyone that's watching this right now, your life is a hell of a lot better than 90% of the population of the world. And because you're watching this, you have an opportunity being solar that is unreal. And if you don't understand the opportunity in front of you right now, you got to have a reality check. You are in such a good spot right now. If you're watching this, whether it's a replay or live, you have internet, you, you know about solar, and now you know about a, a virtual solar club and virtual solar sales. The opportunities in front of you over the next decade are phenomenal. Get your head out of the self-pity. Don't go down that spiral. Of course, the world doesn't want you to succeed. Everyone wants everyone to succeed as long as it's not uh, more successful than them. Of course not. You got to make your own path. So get it going, man. Put it out in front of you. Lay down a plan and, and, uh, and get rocking. That's just the reality. Um, and you need to decide, are you going to be able to put up with that? Because if you can, there's definitely rewards for you. All right. Number four, crush your laziness with routine to fight depression. This is a really good spot. I've, I've uh, struggled with this in the past. When you don't have a routine, when you're sort of getting out of bed whenever, when you don't have a schedule in front of you, um, when you don't have a structure of this is what I do in the morning, this is what I do at night, this is when I take my lunch, whether it's that structured or not, um, idle hands make the devil's uh, playground. Put a structure in place, get your schedule down, um, set your availability, do a something specific in the morning to prepare you, a shower, brush your teeth, the fundamentals, right? But get things going in a, uh, a rhythm. doesn't have to be monotonous, but it can be a rhythm, all right? And that could be a, a lead gen, appointment setting, door knocking. One of my biggest tips that I'll ever say when at the beginning of the day, if you're a cold caller or appointment setter or closer or door knocker and you have to go out and start talking to people, at the beginning of the day, nobody wants to make the first call. Nobody wants to knock the first door. Do this. Put yourself on autopilot. Don't even think about it and say, okay, by the time the clock strikes nine or 10 or whatever, my hand is already on the wood of the first door or I, I can already hear the dial tone of my first call. Make it happen and just get the first call done. Get the first call done, put yourself on autopilot, push that button, knock that door, and get the first uh, conversation with the customer done. I promise you the rest of the day is going to be easier. If you just get that first call done, you can start getting the rhythm of it, right? You might get it in. You might book that appointment. You might close that deal, and then you got fire. Or you might not, and you're like, all right, it's game time. Let's go. Really, really good. Set that routine. Set that structure. It is a depression killer um, if you do that. And number five, lastly but not leastly, Create a structure and stick to it, right? So I've just uh, uh, gone over that, but more intensely, set up your schedule and follow it. Create plans both mentally and physically, write them down. So structure your goals. If you have a goal of in one year, in five years, in 10 years, where you wanna be, where, what you wanna live, what your house is gonna look like, what your apartment's gonna look like, who you're gonna be with, um, how big your TV's gonna be, how happy you or your kids are gonna be, um, uh, how many AC units are, you're gonna have in your house, any goal that you want, 
I have a, a list called the perfect setup on my phone. And what it is, is I've just looked at all the places I've lived and all the, you know, uh, uh, opportunities I've had and environments I've been in around the world. And I've pinpointed things that I liked and things that I didn't like. And now I have a list called the, the perfect setup, uh, the titles on my list of things that I like. I'm, I'm a simple man. I have air conditioning in there. I have an ice machine. Um, I lived in Southeast Asia uh, in uh, me and my team in villas for a while. And that was really nice. So I've slot that in there. Nice villa. I have my perfect setup and now I have a goal. So now I don't have to think about what I want. I already know what I want. Now I'm just going to start working towards it. Structure and physically put them down. Don't just think, what do I want? Because I always thought I knew what I wanted, but then I actually started the list and it like, it changed for me. I'm like, oh wow, I'm actually reading this. This is literally phys words on a screen now. And it makes, it makes sense to me more now, right? So it's a good motivation uh, when you actually put down what you want. Number three, determine your short-term goals and your long-term goals. We've already gone over that. Have your goals. Don't just start winging it. And work, working towards something is far easier than just working. So if you have a goal, regardless of what job you do, could be um, a, a garbage man, a solar salesperson, a chemist, and you're, okay, I'm working and I know how much I can make here. This is my goal to make every year. And in five years, I'm going to have this budget and I'm going to move here. That is a goal. It's a hell of a lot easier doing that day-to-day -day task when you have that goal, when you feel it's worth something, than just working. So attach a goal. It could be anything. It could be something really cool that you like. Just attach a goal in a certain period of time that you say, okay, I'm going to do this for this amount of time in order to do this and attach it. Attach that value, what you want to what you're doing on a daily basis so that you can draw on that inspiration, draw on that motivation to get rocking in the beginning of the day and start your day off strong and, and smash your daily goals. All right. That's it. Number five. And those are my five hacks. There's a lot uh, uh, more that we could go into, but I think I've armed you guys with a lot of stuff that I, I've learned. I do hope you've gotten value here, guys. Um, and uh, yeah, Ruby says she's going to rewrite her list. Do it. Rewrite your list as soon as you get off this stream. Uh, rewrite your list and uh, put it down on a piece of paper or your pen. List five to ten things that you want in your life. Whatever it is. Your environment, your mood, physical objects, whatever it might be. Write it down and get it in front of you. Okay? Um, awesome, guys. Uh, I'd like today. I love these sessions. They're a bit different than the sales strategy, but I do hope everyone got value. Um, I'm going to flash up a screen in a sec here. <clears throat> Again, Virtual Solar Club aims to be a resource ecosystem for all things virtual solar sales. A big thing that I always suggest people starting is jump into the, the our, our training content. Um, always open. The door is always open for you guys um, to reach out to me. We have a ton of resources on our site. Right down below, you can see www.virtualsolar.club. Um, right now for the entire rest of the uh, uh, week. So I got, I think we got three days, four days and um, we have 50% off all our virtual solar sales courses. And we have all our mindset, motivation, closing appointment, setting the whole bloody thing. I can probably say at this point, we have the largest virtual solar sales training content library in the world. It is a behemoth of content to move through and learn from. Um, outside of that, guys, I'm going to leave you to it. I don't see any other questions or comments. Um, so thanks very much for joining us guys. I believe that's it. I think we'll wrap up. Awesome. Next week. Um, next week I will be flying to SolarCon. I really hope to see everyone else there. So I'll announce we might do the ma the, the uh, mastermind next week or we might not. I'll, I'll try to figure out the schedule. Um, but other than that, I really want to see as many of you as possible at virtual SolarCon. go to attend solarcon.com, grab your tickets. Um, outside of that, Thanks very much, guys. Reach out to me if you need anything. And uh, Virtual Solar Club is always there for resources for you for to learn. And uh, uh, make sure to, to grab that, um, that uh, promo that we're doing with all our training courses um, by the end of this week. All right, guys. That is all. Check my comments one more time. I think we're good. Awesome, guys. Thanks very much. Uh, reach out to me if you have any questions. Here to help. Happy selling, soldiers. Have a good one.